The bias resistors have come in for our regulator tube, and it's time to get back at our Hammerlin project. Well, good day, everybody, and welcome back to Mike's Radio Repair and Restoration. Long time no see. Um, as I said, our uh, bias resistors have come in, so we get to change that uh, uh, corroding resistor uh, in the back of this set here. Um, since we last spoke, um, I've used this receiver off and on, and uh, the, uh, the 5U4 to died on it. Um, I was actually uh, in the room here and I could hear an actual arcing and I looked over at the set and the dial lights were flashing. Um, as I got closer to the set I could hear arcing coming from the power supply section and I noticed that uh, um, there was some bad things going, in so going on inside that tube and uh, it quit. Luckily I had a good use spare in stock so I po popped it in and away it went. Uh, so no big deal. I mean, they're old. You expect some tubes to go now and again. So our first stop for this radio is to get our uh, our new resistor in. Um, I'm going to throw up a picture of the old one. Uh, we had another one that did this that corroded and fell apart uh, on the other side in the power supply. And this is the bias resistor for the VR, the regulator tube. So pretty important. And uh, I can see somebody has been soldering at one of those back connectors, and it's not a very pretty job, so we'll clean that up. So it's going to be my first stop is to uh, replace that resistor, and then we'll move on. So I'll come back once I get that new resistor installed. Okay. Here we are with our new virus resistor installed up here, um, and I'm doing some voltage checks. So this is kind of important. Um, one side of this is unregulated B+. And prior to changing this resistor, my unregulated B+, was almost 260 volts. After changing the resistor, my unregulated B+, dropped to 240. You know, it's, it was about a 19-volt difference, actually, 259 to 240. That's what we're seeing, 240 here now, on uh, the unregulated side of this resistor. Um, the regulated side before and after the resistor change was both 109, so that didn't change, which is good, and I didn't really expect it to, but pulling the unregulated B plus line down is something I did expect, and it's important for you to consider that when you're restoring a radio, repairing a radio, that you get the power supply proper and all the voltages proper. The uh, so, uh, selectivity, sensitivity adjustment um, works off of unregulated, unregulated B+. So when you change the voltage to some of those tubes, its response and its passband can change a little bit, uh, enough so that you're not getting uh, full performance out of your receiver. So I'm always a stickler to make sure that we've got voltage proper before we proceed to alignment. So now that uh, this resistor is in place, because this old one here, I don't know how well you can see it, um, it continued to fall apart and crumble as I took it out. It's supposed to be 3,000 ohms, and it was measuring almost 4,500 ohms. So that was 1,500 ohms out. That's quite a bit. So the new one brought everything back into spec. So with the unregulated B plus being pulled down to where it belongs, according looking looking at the voltage chart, I'm in the right range. Um, I think we could safely proceed to alignment at this point. So I think we'll uh, flip to the schematic diagram and we'll have a discussion about some of my feelings about alignment on this. The manufacturer wants us to do it one stage at a time, and I think that's way too invasive. We're going to do something else. We're going to do it's probably what I'm going to do is easier, um, but we have more modern equipment. Um, to be able to do this with, uh, without disturbing things too much. So we'll look at the schematic next, and we'll discuss what my game plan is going to be. Now we've got our voltages right. We can move on. Okay, here we're looking at the uh, schematic for the uh, Hammerland. The uh, manufacturer's instructions ask you, 
to test every stage along the way, like each IF transformer to tap in on the way in and tap in on the way out. Um, I don't think that's a great idea based on today's test equipment. Any amount of coupling into these circuits is going to change the result. So if we were to couple in to each of these stages, like into this transformer stage here and this transformer stage here, there's a pretty highly good chance we're going to alter the tune of those IF transformers. Um, so I'm not wild about using their procedure. The best way to couple in is really to not couple in at all. We will be coupling in, but we won't be directly connecting to all of these transformers. So what I'm going to do is this is V3, the mixer tube, and this is the input of the mixer tube. R6 here is a 47K resistor. So I'm going to clip my signal generator onto that resistor's body. Not right onto any of the metal, but I'm going to inductively or very loosely couple a 455 kilohertz signal into that resistor. And I'm going to uh, transmit it, if you will, right across all of the transformers. And I'm going to pick it up with my poor man's spectrum analyzer at the output of this transformer here, which is this junction just before this 10 puff capacitor. And again, that's a wire. We are not going to disturb it. We're not going to clip onto that wire directly. We're going to inductively couple. We're gonna put an alligator clip on that, maybe with a little bit of tape or a little bit of insulation from a wire um, so that we don't damage the wire. We're not directly going to connect to that uh, lead we're going to very lightly inductively couple. This way we're not adding any stray capacitance or inductance or anything that can change the results of any of these transformers. So hopefully we'll get a decent image on our spectrum analyzer screen that will allow us to go through and tune these transformers. And it's gonna allow us to take a peek at how the uh, the crystal filter is working and probably going to have to make some adjustments there based on um, how I see it operating right now. I don't think it's I don't think it's set up proper, but our poor man's spectrum analyzer should give us what's called a, a visual alignment. So uh, I think that's pretty straightforward. So again, we're going to couple in at the beginning of the, the mixer. I think other Hamelin receivers, you can use a similar um, uh, deployment again we're going to couple on to this r6 resistor onto the body no direct metal contact and back down the other end we're going to clip on here and again not directly to the wire but just inductively or very very loosely coupled to that wire we're going to just pick up some of the signal radiating through that wire now what i'm going to do is i'm going to put test leads on both of those points being that r6 resistor and this output wire here, and I'm going to come out and I'm going to bring both of those test leads to a 0.01 capacitor. Uh, so before it goes to the signal generator, it'll go through a 0.01 capacitor. And same with the poor man's spectrum analyzer, it'll go through a 0.01 capacitor. Now I may need to change that up or down based on sensitivity, but that's going to be the initial setup. So I'm going to begin uh, doing that setup now and uh, we'll see... Uh, uh, we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so one of the first things that we need to do, we need to figure out where the crystal center is. Obviously, the crystal isn't perfectly on 455 kilohertz. It's probably one side or the other. And if you look at the screen here, you can see the pass band of the IF. And this spur here is a signal being generated exactly at 455 kilohertz. So the center of our passband is 456 kilohertz, well, 456.436. So that's going to probably be our crystal center. We can kind of confirm that by turning it on here now. 455. 
455.545. So that's what we should be tuning our uh, our signal generator center to. So I'm just going to stop and get that done. Okay. I've done quite a bit off camera because somebody really, uh, I guess they put their best foot forward and tried to align this radio. Uh, it was quite a ways off, and I've actually spent at least an hour and a half getting it uh, to where it is now. So, but I mean, uh, it's really not hard. <clears throat> so what I'm doing now is, as I said, I'm feeding in a signal from my generator. Um, I'm clipped onto that one resistor up here. I'm not directly coupled in or not directly uh, tied in uh, conductively. I'm inductively coupled so the circuit doesn't know I'm there. Same on the output uh, of the other side of the IF going into the uh, 6AL5. I'm coupled in there very lightly. Again, not directly coupled to any wire. So the sweep generator is on the signal generator and I'm sweeping 20 kilohertz. Uh, so 445 to 465 is what I'm sweeping, and that's what you see here on the spectrum analyzer. Um, so basically all I've done um, is I've tuned all the main IF transformers for a maximum peak here on the uh, IF frequency that we determined this crystal radio, the crystal in the radio was using. So, and I got a nice curve. I've got a nice response curve. The crystal filter I knew was kind of messed up. I know I could pull a good notch on one side, but not really on the other. And that's really where I spent the time. So there is, I believe, T2 and L2 in the same can. And T2, I just peaked for maximum throughput without the crystal filter on. And then L2, I have adjusted till I can get an equal notch on either side. And then let's go through that now. But I mean, this is a nice, nice pass band. It's picked up, but it's looking really good. So if we go into the second step of the IF or the uh, crystal notch filter, we can see basically it's pretty straight, which is kind of nice. And if I dial it down one way, you can see I'm beginning to pull up a very heavy notch on this one side, and that's just beautiful. And if I dial it the other way, and you can see I'm pulling up that same notch on the other side. That's just an absolute treat. So, I mean, if you're trying to notch out a, an, a, an offending broadcast station, you can certainly do that. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. That's, uh, I like that. So. Uh, and once again, bringing it up to the center. So that's our pretty much our zero point there. So we can turn that off now and go back to a regular eye of past that. So again, this is not hard to do. Um, it's a bit of a fuss to set it up. Again, tune all your transformers for maximum, and then you play with T2 and L2 until you get again maximum through, and you get a uh, that uh, that nice notch on either side. So it's called a visual alignment. And uh, again, uh, uh, the equipment that I'm using here is not expensive at all. It's not thousands of dollars worth of stuff, really. Um, but uh, it worked well. This is the first time I've, I've done a Hammerland uh, with the poor man spectrum analyzer. I've used, usually used much more expensive equipment, but this actually worked out quite well. So this is something the average hobbyist can go, guy can do, uh, do at home. So uh, I'm anxious to test it out. So I'm going to disconnect it all, and uh, we're going to flip it around, connect an antenna and a speaker to it, and uh, see how that crystal filter uh, behaves. Uh, I'm really looking forward to try it out. We'll, we'll we'll do that next. Okay, so the last thing we want to do here is, of course, we want to zero beat the BFO. So we put it in BFO. I've got my uh, signal generator injecting a signal at the now, now new known IF frequency based on the crystal that was uh, inside. 
so we can hear the CW controls right at zero. I'm hearing a tone. So when I got zero beat, I'm at two, and I really want zero beat when I'm at zero. So there's a little handy screw right on the side here. I can get on it. And there we go. We've zero beaded our uh, our uh, our BFO. So now we can uh, screw an antenna on it and see how it does. Okay. Well, let's uh, have a listen. I think I got a couple of guys on uh, AM forty meters. So this is uh, no filter. Okay, very good. Um, yeah, good signal here. Uh, so you can completely uh, clean up, narrow up the bandwidth is, uh, good, uh, with the crystal filter. Uh, on the scope here, you know, on the uh, spectrum uh, on the on the pin adapter there, it's uh, really nice uh, on the spectrum spectrum display there. So uh, you got equal uh, upper and lower sideband, and you know, good. So, so that's working and again. It sounds great. That's uh, BFO sideband. Okay, so it works good. Um, I won't bore the pants off you. I'm going to do uh, the RF deck alignment. Uh, I'm going to quickly go through it and touch it up. But uh, I mentioned in a, another video on this receiver that I'm very skeptical about doing it and spending a lot of time at it. So I'm going to quickly touch it up and put it in the case to see what happens. As I said, there's no holes in the bottom of the case so that I can't align it while it's in the case. And yet we know from other videos and other receivers that um, when you put a metal bottom on all the near all the coils and whatnot, the alignment will drift with that. So I'm not convinced that I, you know, I'm not interested in spending a whole couple hours of my life making the alignment perfect, putting it in the case and finding out the case made it drift. So I'm going to touch up the areas that are kind of sort of questionable and, uh, Put it in the case and try it and if it doesn't change maybe i'll pop it back out of the case and uh and do a better alignment on it uh, um but anyway so uh i guess that's pretty much it for this old girl um we uh dealt, dealt with the power supply issues and the filter caps and the resistors and uh we put the eye back on track we put the crystal filter back on track and uh Got the BFO cooking along pretty good. It uh, seems to be working pretty good. All in all, a nice receiver. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, it wasn't too expensive. Um, so I guess we'll wrap that up at this point. Um, but just to refresh, the alignment that was done here was the visual alignment. It wasn't hard to do. Uh, I showed you how to tap in, how to very loosely couple in without touching anything or disturbing anything. Um, with uh, affordable equipment. So uh, I think that's a win-win. But anyways, again, we'll, uh, we'll shut this one down here. And uh, thanks for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you again in the next one.